Hi everybody, welcome to episode 6. Today we're going to be talking about the origami elephant. Now, the elephant that is my favorite out of all the elephants I've ever folded is one that you don't typically think of as a traditional elephant. It's in a seated position and it looks more like a baby elephant, which is fine because most of the mobiles are used for nurseries and so it's fine that it looks like a little baby elephant and that he's playing around and having fun and he seems to have a lot of charm and personality which is the main reason I love this little elephant. Now the only reason that I know how to fold this elephant is because I happened to buy the book that had the instructions for this elephant back before I was even making mobiles. I found this cute little elephant in there and I just had to fold it and fell in love with it. While doing research for this episode I actually came across a video about an origami artist who folded a life-size elephant and this elephant is now in a museum somewhere in Europe and it's just it's huge it's amazing to think that you know someone can actually fold something that big out of paper is the neatest thing so this is a nightlight that I made he's a prototype and it's with the same elephant model that I just showed you and I love this model because he can stand on his own and he's got some room in there so you can actually put the lights inside of him but I mean really is this not like the cutest elephant you've ever seen really so cute I love him I'm glad you guys are here you can actually see how to fold him and learn how to fold it and um, I hope you enjoy it so let's get started so I start with a six by six inch square that's gray on one side and white on the other and you want to fold it in half diagonally and when you fold a paper in half you want to make sure that the edges are flush so that you don't have any white showing on the front or on the back so you want to check the front you want to look at the back see if there's any white if there is then you make some adjustments and check again and then once it's in position you think it's in the right position you want to pinch that corner with one hand and then use your other hand to slide across and pinch the paper to create this preliminary pinch fold here. Once you know that your fold is in the right position, then you can crease it really well. You want to open up the paper and fold it up the other way in half so that once again you create that triangular shape and you want to line up the edges really well, make sure there isn't any white showing on either side, and then slide your finger across, pinch all the way up, pinch all the way down, and then give a nice good crease along that fold there. Unfold the sheet of paper and now we put it down we want to create a fish base. So you start by folding up to the midline. Be careful not to cross the midline. So you see that center crease we originally made there? You want to fold up to it but do not cross over it. And I like to crease only up to this point here where we meet the other crease because you can crease it all the way across but I don't like to because then you end up with a crease on your model that isn't necessary so that's why I stop there so once again fold up to the midline do not cross the midline and once your paper is in the correct position make sure to score it you can use your nails or some other scoring tool now collapse along those creases that you just made and you create this triangular flap Make sure to fold the flap up and down so that you have a nice hinge crease and repeat everything on the other side. You can either open it up to fold the other side or just leave it closed. So now once again you fold up to the midline, do not cross the midline, get that little pointy end in place first and then crease and then open it up and do the same thing on the other end here. Fold to the midline, do not cross the midline and then crease so that everything's in position. And once again, you collapse and create that triangular flap and fold it up and down. Now we have this diamond shape and we want to fold it in half lengthwise so that the triangular flaps end up on the outside of the model. Now we're going to work on the back end of the elephant. So you want to take the end that is away from the triangular flaps and you want to take that end and fold it up so that the edge of that end lies right along that hinge crease for the triangular flaps. So you want to score that really well and then you rotate your model 
and you want to use that same end and now fold it up so that you have just a tiny little point sticking up over that edge there. And once you score that really well, you're going to see that end is going to be your tail. Next, you open up the model back to that diamond shape that we had, and we want to turn those creases into outside reverse folds. So make sure to reverse the crease, and then collapse the model back down, and then we want another outside reverse fold down here along the creases that you previously created. Now, I accidentally did not follow the crease I made, so I had to open it back up and fix it and then rescore that and then collapse it and now you can make the little tail so I like to do this at this point so that I have more control over the angle of the tail it's a little outside reverse fold right here and then you can kind of yank on the tail and put it in the angle you like and just kind of pinch it flat next we're going to shorten the legs a little and in the written instructions, it's done later on, but I like to do it now because the model isn't full of layers and all compact yet. So I like to score right along there with my nail just to give me a guide. And then I open up the back end and using that little guide I just created there, I do an inside reverse fold and then you crease it. And now you take those two triangular flaps and you fold them back. We're going to work on the front end of the elephant now. You take that end and you fold it up behind the model so that this point right here ends up being in the very center of that triangle you created. Now you crease, once it's in position, you crease it really well. And now you fold that end down so that the edge runs right along the top edge of the model, just like that. So you can see that right up there. Now we are going to inside reverse fold along these creases that we just created. So you open it up and then you inside reverse fold. Make sure that you go along the creases because they're your guide to where the fold should be and then inside reverse fold again. Next we're going to fold the ears. So you take this top layer here and you fold it up so that it lines up with the top edge of the model. And then you open that up and you want to collapse, you want to inside reverse fold along one of the creases, the bottom crease, and then in the front you want to fold it all the way. You see there's your original crease and that's where you want it to end up. So you want to fold it all the way so you end up with a lopsided inside reverse fold. And we want to do the same thing on the other side. So you flip your model over, once again you fold that top layer up to the top edge of the model and once you have that crease in you open it up and you collapse to inside reverse fold but you want to push all the way back up to that point to create that lopsided fold. Next we're going to fold the front legs so you want to fold the triangular flap down so that its front edge is now going to line up with the edge of that inside reverse fold we just created. You flip the model over same thing, the front edge lies along that edge of the inside reverse fold. To create the ears, you take the top layer and you fold it back as far as it goes. Now this layer is actually made up of several layers. This is the leg that we just folded from the previous steps. Now we take layers on top of that, and we fold everything back as far as it goes, and then we have the ears. We want to round out the tips of the ears because right now they're really pointy. So you can either do that by just kind of scoring it with your fingernail and then inside reverse folding along that little score that you made. Or you could fold the tip over entirely, just fold the whole thing, open it up, and then inside reverse fold. Once we're finished with the elephant's ears, we are going to move on to the elephant's face and trunk. So you're going to take the front end over here and you're going to open that up and outside reverse fold to create a nice broad face. So once that's in position, you want to inside reverse fold to create the trunk. So the front end, you open it up and you inside reverse fold so that you can see the trunk and the front foot 
and the end of the trunk meet at the bottom creating this very narrow triangle right in here. To make the trunk a little bit more narrow we take the front edge and fold it back close to the back edge. Not all the way back, you do want to leave a little gap there about a millimeter worth of space and you can see that little bit of space that I left right there. So now you want to flip it over and do the same thing on the other side and just narrow it out. Don't fold it all the way back. And now we are going to put a little curve in the trunk. We want it to look kind of like this one over here. So to do that, we are going to have to do some inside and outside reverse folds. You start by opening up the front here and then pushing the trunk inside and then do that inside reverse fold and it sticks straight forward and then we open up the paper again and this time it's an outside reverse fold so that the trunk is now going to curve up and for the tip you can either fold it in or you can fold it out depending on whatever you want there. So we're going to fold the tip of his trunk out just like that. So the little elephant is almost ready. We just need to do a couple more things. His feet are too pointy, so we need to do some inside reverse folds, but these require pre-creasing. So fold the tips of the front legs up in the front and the back so that they end up being the same length. Once you do that, you unfold the tips, and you're going to open up these pockets that have been created by the legs here. And then you inside reverse fold along the creases that you just made. So once again, you open up the pocket and you inside reverse fold the tip of the leg. Once you've adjusted the lengths of the front legs, there's basically only one thing left to do, and that's to round out the rear. I like to use my fingernail to create this little triangle back here. So I make a little score line and then I open up the back end here and you inside reverse fold along that little mark that you created. And so there he is, he's all done. The little one was folded from a six inch square, whereas the big one here was folded from a 12 inch square. You can see there's a big difference in size depending on the size paper that you start with. I really hope you enjoyed today's episode learning all about this adorable little elephant and learning all the little tricks on specific folds that can be a little bit difficult. Make sure that you check the show notes so you can find out where you can find instructions for this elephant and where you can find instructions for other origami elephants. I'll also have the names of any artists mentioned in the video. Be sure that if you did enjoy our video today that you like and subscribe, you share it with your friends so other people can learn how to fold this little elephant. So I really hope you guys have enjoyed the episode so far and I'll see you again at the end of the summer. Bye! Hi guys, welcome to episode 6 of Timeless Cranes Origami Reviews. What did I call it last time? I can't remember. Um, and stop it on me. Stop with the hands! You know what? Who could resist such an adorable little elephant? Let's do a more serious version. Can I do a more serious version? Okay. And, um, and hope he brings you lots of entertainment. I don't know. <laughs> Why are you scratching the sofa? Don't scratch the sofa during a video. That's not nice. Yeah, you're distracting. Come here. Do you want to say hello? Say hello, everyone. Hello, everyone on YouTube.